Okay, I'm here with Molly Katzpole with Rebuild a Dream. Thank you very much, Molly. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, uh, when uh, Congresswoman Virginia Fox, uh, who happens to chair the House Subcommittee, um, On higher education. Wait, wait, yeah, wait a minute. I just got some sort of warning message. I'm going to start over. Okay. Okay. So that's three, two, one. I'm here with Molly Catchpole with Rebuild a Dream. Thank you, for, thank you, Molly. Thank you for having me. Okay. So Congresswoman Virginia Fox, who was the chair of the House Subcommittee on Higher Education, made this statement about a week ago that she had very little tolerance for people who had uh, uh, large student debt. And you reacted with a petition. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the reaction to that petition? Uh, well, we started the petition because it, it just, it was like this crazy thing that she said that, um, you know, she said that there wasn't any need to graduate with large amounts of student debt. Right. Which, you know, when you're chair of the subcommittee on higher education, I, you know, I, I would hope that you would be a little bit more in touch with the state of um, of college affordability today. Uh, and so she said that and it just struck me as really, really out of touch, pretty abrasive um, and just and frankly, completely unacceptable. So we started the petition. To and, me, and, and I hate to interrupt you, but. The, that's something that you take personally because you've got some college debt, don't you? Yes, I do. I have a lot of it. I and you know what? And I'm one of those students that graduated with a lot of student debt. So for you, uh, you know, this is not something that uh, uh, the the implication from uh, Congresswoman Fox was that uh, this is uh, uh, a phenomenon of students being lazy or just being, I, I don't know what, what she was right. thinking, but right. the implication certainly was that simply because she got through uh, college on what it turns out to be about six or $700 a year in today's dollars, yeah. uh, that somehow um, that makes her experience superior to uh, students today who are going to or, or are facing bills of about uh, ten to twenty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, yeah, um, it, yeah. It's really strange. I don't know why she thought that she could compare the two because they're completely different. Um, you know, you're 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 talking of about you know a couple of hundred dollars a, a year for her to go versus thousands. I mean that you know that couple of hundred dollars wouldn't even cover textbooks. Right. You know, the that she probably paid per semester is is akin to what we pay each semester in books alone. Exactly. So you 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 launched this petition, and uh, I'm, I understand that's going to be delivered to the Tuesday uh, up uh, to her office. In fact, we're going to be actually delivering it to Speaker Boehner's office. To because, Speaker Boehner's office, okay? Because right, we want um we want him and Congress to come out and um you know tell Fox that making statements like that isn't okay. And how many signatures did you get? We have about 108,000. 108,000 in, mm -hmm. in about a week. That's, that's, that's rather incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so let's get to the, the, the thing that's going to be hitting the news this week, which is the Stafford Loan Program. Mm -hmm. And uh, the concern which sparked this whole controversy was that the interest rate on those Stafford loans are going to double uh, mm -hmm. starting July 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, what's... How significant is that? Well, it's a change that will affect millions of students. Uh, so the interest rate would go from 3.4% to 6.8% on subsidized Stafford loans. And so the students who need those loans the most will be paying about $5,000 more on that loan um, over, the, over its lifetime, which mm -hmm. is completely unacceptable. And we're talking about students... In many cases, $5,000 is, is a big deal, and particularly in this economy, because you have so many students who are graduating out of college and they're not getting high paying pay, pay jobs at all. Right, right. You know, they're underemployed or they're just completely unemployed. So this fight is, 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 a, is, a, is a pretty big fight. Uh, what else are you doing, besides these petitions, what else are you doing to... Uh, uh, push uh, Congress on this issue? 
we did uh, a bunch of Senate calls a couple of weeks ago. We had our members flood Senate offices um, with phone calls telling them to vote uh, to extend the extend the bill. Um, and we went, we might do something like that again. Uh, that was really successful. Our, our members really liked doing that. Um, and we're also working with a bunch of other groups who are, who are working on this issue, uh, to hopefully stage bigger actions, um, and, you know, work on this together with other groups. Okay. Now the Stafford loan issue is, um, just one piece though of a bigger problem. Uh, with college affordability, right. and it certainly strikes me that you know even even if we solve that problem, there's the 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 fundamental problem of of a an economy that demands people to be higher to get this higher education. Mm -hmm. But frankly, twenty thousand dollars a year, even at three percent, is too much, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it strikes me that you hear constantly hear the president talking about, um, you know, what the unemployment rate or, you know, the difference in salary of, of people who go to college versus people who don't go to college. You constantly hear how necessary it is to have a college degree, yet we stop funding public education at 12th grade. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense um, how, you know, there's study after study showing how much money, how much more money you make. Um, with a college degree, you know, better you can get better jobs with with health care and you know everything. Yet we're we're putting the an abysmal amount of money into funding higher education. I mean, it's it's tiny in in comparison to what we need. So, if you had President Obama uh, uh, in front of you, what would you tell him to do? What kind of what would what would be the thing that he could do? in your mind that would really uh, begin to get at the heart of this? I mean, I just, I feel like I hear him and I hear politicians talking about how important education is and I'm just, I, there's no, there's not enough movement. I mean, drastic measures need to be taken um, to, to make sure that college is affordable everywhere. I mean, if we can spend however much money it is each day on defense, I, there's no reason why our public education system shouldn't be the best thing that we have in this country um, and, and the most important and the top priority uh, because that's, that's really the key to having a, a healthy, you know, prosperous life. Um, if I had President Obama in front of me right now, you know, I, I'd tell him, I don't, I don't know what I would say. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd say whatever's happening right now isn't good enough. You know, we need to keep pushing the envelope. You know, uh, as you said, if if we're spending, willing to spend um, uh, billions of dollars on weaponry, if we're willing to spend billions of dollars, uh, certainly on tax cuts for the wealthy, we could certainly uh, spend billions of dollars to make sure our young people are educated enough so that they can take the leadership in rebuilding the economy. Yeah, it's it's an investment, and it's it's nothing short of an investment. Um, it's not it's not you know extraneous spending. It's not it's not something you know. It, it's it's an investment, and I don't understand you know why more people aren't aren't treating it that way. It's frustrating. All right. Well, I know you'll be coming to our Take Back the American Dream conference in June, and you're going to be pushing this issue and, and yes. helping us to sort of uh, build a progressive coalition and a progressive movement that can that can advance this agenda. Yes. So yes. I really look forward uh, to have you join us uh, uh, in June at the Take Back the American Dream conference. Of course. Of course. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much, Molly. Thanks, Isaiah.